Is it too late to start learning cybersecurity today in 2021? This is a question that I think a lot of people had on their minds, especially as you see it more and more in the news. And now you start to see a lot of training, educational programs sprout up. And a lot there are a lot more people entering this field now than there was before. So I'll be answering that question in this video. Hey guys, this is Ryan from Elevate Cyber. Is it too late now in 2021? You know, people have been talking about cybersecurity for a while. I remember when I was in college uh, back in 2014, 2015, uh, I heard a ton about cybersecurity back then. And that was, you know, about uh, six, seven years ago at this point. And, you know, now it has, I've seen the space grow so much. Uh, with so many more educational programs available, so much more uh, learning opportunities there, courses and different things that you can, um, different resources you could tap into to help learn this skill set that wasn't there, quite frankly, was not available, you know, back back then and uh, before that, right? So is it too late now? It's a question I think it's on a lot of people's minds. And to that, I would say, well, I'll cut the suspense here. I will say absolutely not. It's not too late to learn. Here's the thing, right? A lot of people are concerned, like I said in the beginning, like I kind of alluded to in the beginning of this video, a lot of people are concerned with how many more people are coming into the space. And as you might know, in any area, the lower they make that barrier to entry, the more crowded a space becomes and the more competitive a space becomes, right? Here's the thing when it comes to security though, this is why this is not going to be an issue pretty much ever as far as I can see. The thing about security is it's it's pretty much an omnipresent term, right? It's omni omnipresent, right? So security, what does that even mean, right? It means keeping something, you know, keeping stuff safe, right? Keeping stuff secure. Well, what does that mean? What is stuff, right? Stuff is anything, literally anything that is connected to the internet these days is normally what we're talking about when we're talking about security. Now, there is physical security as well and, uh, you know, on-site type of security. But in the in the space of, uh, you know, cyber security, right, the cyber part means that it is, you know, it's in cyberspace, right? Now, think about all the things that are connected to the Internet. It's ridiculous, right? Of course, you have computers, you have servers, you have um, IoT devices, right? Your fridge, your smart TV, all those things, right? Your car. Yeah, even your car, right? If you have uh, like, you know, for example, OnStar or some kind of app that you can remotely start your car, well, obviously that is connected to the internet, right? And, uh, you know, even the smallest devices that you wouldn't even expect to have internet c connectivity nowadays likely have internet connectivity, and even the new technology that's emerging, you hear a lot about cryptocurrency and different projects in that space. And you know, you hear about hacks happening, right? People losing their crypto, exchanges getting hacked, all kinds of things, right? All that stuff needs to be secured and all that stuff needs to be understood by the security professionals that are you know, securing those systems. They need to understand the technology, right? Not just security. With security, you can't just learn some generic stuff and expect that that's going to be enough to keep things secure. You have to combine your knowledge of security with your knowledge of the technology that you're trying to secure, right? So if I'm a web app security guy, for example, not only do I need to understand security concepts, I need to understand at least some programming concepts and how websites are built, or at least have a basis of understanding there, right? Right? If I am doing blockchain security, right, for smart contracts and things like that, well, not only do I need to understand security, I also need to understand, you know, the programming of those blockchains and of those smart contracts and, and the code side of things, right? So it's always going to be that way. So even if you have a lot of people flooding into the realm of cybersecurity, well, what does that mean? Okay, maybe certain areas at a certain point will become more saturated. Like maybe there will be a lot more people that are in uh, app security, right? Um, 
with like websites and things like that, right? But there'll still be other opportunities to niche down into areas that are more on the frontier and less populated. Now, a lot of people learn things through courses, university, things like that, which is good. But the thing about those very formal courses and university courses is they're always very behind, right? They're, they're always at least a few years. If you're talking university, they're about at least five years behind, let's be honest, right? And some of these other more formal courses that have official certifications, they're at least three years behind. To be generous, we'll say that, right? And so this there's always going to be an opportunity, a little arbitrage opportunity, if you will, for the people that are learning things that are on the cutting edge, that there's not all these you know, nice and fancy courses created for yet, right? And because of that, there will always be opportunity, right? Because the masses are going to flock to what is, uh, has the lowest barrier of entry, right? Right now, I would say one of the lowest barriers of entry would be like network security, app security. I mean, personally, I do a lot of app security, not exclusively. I do some on the network side as well. But yeah, those are probably the lowest barrier to entry, right? It's super simple to figure out, okay, how do I do app security? Oh, I can learn a lot about that on Try Hack Me, right? I could go to a bunch of CTF boxes on Hack the Box. I can Google search tons of stuff and find free resources out there to learn a lot of web app pen testing, network pen testing, things like that, right? Fair enough. But if I want to learn something like blockchain security, that is... There's a lot less resources for that. You know, you don't have any fancy options like Try Hack Me to learn that type of stuff at the moment. In the future, you probably will. And when that happens, the barrier to entry is going to lower, right? But there'll be new technology. There'll be other technology out there that's still on the frontier, and there's an arbitrage opportunity. But even with all this being said, I'm just doing this to illustrate the point that there will always be a high demand for cybersecurity because of how it is a multi-layered skill set. But even with that said, I do foresee there's still being a lot of opportunity in AppSec, right? In the area of even some of these network security jobs and things like that. Now, some of the network security type of things, maybe a little bit less, the stuff that's on site, as you see in 2020 with all the work from home policies, a lot of stuff is going to the cloud, more remote, and so the on-prem jobs are probably not as prevalent as they were, but now a lot of people are starting to move back into a more hybrid schedule or even work in the office type of schedule. And there always needs to be like those red team guys, those offensive security guys that do the, some testing on the on-prem, right? On premise. So the people that go in and actually do a little bit of physical security testing out of, you know, designated a location. So those jobs will still be available, but I definitely foresee that a lot of these jobs, even for now, even like your web app security and things like that are just going to be very prevalent. Cause here's the thing, right? Every single company needs websites. And what a lot of companies are starting to find out is that it's a lot more advantageous for them to do security in house as in have a security team that is part of their company versus outsourcing it. Because when you outsource it, a lot of times the contractors, they don't really care much as much about your organization and they don't do as good of a job and uh, they're paid based off of the hours, right? And they're just, they're just clocking in, clocking out, right? When they have a dedicated security team, you know, they're a little bit more invested, right? Because that they're part of that company. And uh, a lot of companies are basically, they're seeing this, and they're deciding to bring security in-house. So every company needs websites. They need some kind of network infrastructure, if nothing else, right? And that all that stuff has to be secured, right? So just like pretty much everyone needs developers, it's starting to come to the point that, hey, everyone needs security as well. They're like All these companies are building out their security teams. And uh, there are still a lot of contracting work available, right? Um a lot of these companies, they actually have an in-house security team, but they also hire these contractors to come in just to get another perspective to make sure they're not missing anything critical that they should be detecting. So 
case in point, there's a lot of opportunity in this field, and I think there's going to continue to be so. I mean, if you look at the news, you see all this stuff happening. You see all the extra funding that's being poured into cybersecurity, and rightfully so, right? So there is just tremendous opportunity in this field that's not going away anytime soon, even if certain areas get saturated. There'll always be ways to niche down. If you have any interest in this field at all, you are in the right place. Just stay the course, stay the path, uh, no matter how far you feel like you are from reaching your goal, reaching your destination. Just remember, this is a journey. This No one learns this stuff overnight. It takes time to learn it. it takes a little bit of struggle, a little bit of practice. But if you are consistent about trying to learn this stuff and you persist as well, you don't give up you will get there. That's the message I really want to drive home. If you take nothing else from this video, you will get there and there is opportunity and there is a space for you uh, within this field. So hopefully, you know, this video was of help to you. If so, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button as well so we can help out even more people. And if you are interested in learning what it takes to get into this field and to get some success here, check out the video on screen now, this playlist series, uh, The Beginner's Guide to Ethical Hacking. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.